Hi guys, and welcome to another video. I would have liked to have started the vlog this week with a shot of me throwing a stone into the sea, uh, but as I'm on a salt marsh, uh, I can't find any, so that's that idea gone out the window. I suppose I could try one of these uh, tiny shells. Let's uh, give that a go. I'm starting the vlog this week uh, on this salt marsh because I think it has an important link to the Bronze Age site uh, that we're going to be having a look at today, a little bit further up uh, there. Uh, and we may have made a discovery, an exclusive discovery. Let's not waste any more time. We're going to crack on up there through the imaginatively named Seawood uh, to find what we've come to see today. Come on. They always say that stone circles uh, were used for ceremonial, ritualistic purposes, don't they? And if that was the case, then the Druid's Temple that we're having a look at uh, today uh, must uh, link to this stretch of coast. So if there was a ceremony, if they did carry scabbards or uh, virgins, whatever, uh, down to the coast from the circle, this is where they would have come to. And uh, with this talk of Druid's temples, uh, you may be getting a bit concerned that I've gone a little bit MJ. Uh, where we're going to is more commonly known as Birkrig Stone Circle. This isn't actually the vlog that I had uh, planned to film today. I was meant to be out Roman gazetting, but um, I then realised that it was the coronation of Charles III, God Save the King. Uh, and uh, that led me to the conclusion that where I'd planned to go to would be bedecked with bunting and Union Jacks and celebrating subjects. So uh, I've brought this vlog forward in the production schedule for that reason. It's here as we go into the woods that I sense that we ought to have some form of historical reenactment. I haven't got my sword today because uh, I had to lend it to those lot down in Westminster today. So this Manfrotto monopod will have to do for this uh, uh, reconstruction of a Bronze Age ceremony that I like to imagine happened here on the way up to the Stone Circle. nothing to do with our druids temple but as we come up through seawood you'll see that the wild garlic is now uh, coming out and I've got a, an important little tip for you um, if you're going to pick that to eat it don't pick it from the side of the path go out into there uh, to get it because uh, this is where dogs will uh, do their business and you don't really want to eat that do you behind me is the direct uh, route that we have followed up uh, from the uh, coast. So this is the route that I think they would have taken to this sacred uh, site. It is quite warm today so I've had to lose my jacket even though I actually cheated and drove up here in the car. It's just parked uh, over there. Now Birkrig Common is, as the name implies, a common and that means that uh, everybody's allowed to come here and do whatever they like. So we are having to contend today with some tykes on motorbikes, uh, but we're soldier on nonetheless. I hope you're ready for this guys, this is a fantastic place. Welcome to the Druid's Temple, sometimes known as the Druid's Circle or more prosaically known as Birkrig Stone Circle. Believed to date to somewhere between 1400 to 1700 BC, Birkrig Stone Circle is a very special place. There are a number of unique things about it. Uh, it's concentric circles, an inner ring and an outer ring. Uh, I imagine you're looking at some stage at an overlay, some sort of overlay, uh, to give you a better impression of that. The inner circle has survived better, uh, but there is still an outer circle there quite, uh, quite clearly. It's also terraced, uh, which is another unusual feature of this wonderful place. Ah, in my imaginary earpiece, my imaginary production team have just told me that there's even been some fake drone footage. 
Hi guys, I'm now with Ian, who is uh, something of a local expert on Birkrig Stone Circle. He's got loads to tell us about it. So, Ian, first of all, you mentioned to me that uh, for a long time there was debate about whether it was one circle or two. Yes, there was a, a lot of debate from um, over many years, really, over whether it was a double or a single. It has now been confirmed it's a definite double circle. Um, one of the things I love about it is in the Victorian maps, you've got a double circle on the map, and then in Gothic lettering, Druid's Temple, which obviously it never was. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the sort of mumbo jumbo sort of uh, factor. Um, and you also mentioned uh, to me, uh, really sort of surprising, that we have a pop star connection with the place as well. What's all that about? Um, Julian Cope, who used to be the singer for Teardrop Explodes in the 80s, he did a big book on stone circles because he's very much into them. And in his big book of stone circles, he comes up here and he's very complimentary about the site. So what do you think makes Birkrig? There are a lot of stone circles, aren't there? And there's a lot yeah. of stone circles in Cumbria. A lot, yeah. What do you think makes this one special? Let's look out there. The view across the bay is stunning. I mean, in some respects, it might have been more sensible to have put the stone circle on top of the hill. So you've got the yeah. big old round panoramic view. But for whatever reason, they wanted it down here. And so it's here and you've got this gorgeous view across the bay. Um, I really don't know beyond that why they put it here. But So we, we have to ask you the million dollar question, uh, Ian. Why did they do this? What were these circles for, in your opinion? In my opinion, I think they functioned as an equivalent to a cross between the town hall and the local church. Civic ceremony, religious ceremony, and with, we know there were burials inside it. Our ancestors are here. This is our land, this is our proof of ownership, and it's really vital to the community. Fan that's fantastic. Well, look, thanks for joining us on the vlog. No problem. Uh, it's been really, really useful. Thanks a lot. Very strange things come to mind when you're stood in the centre of a circle like this. Um, you can have all sorts of mystical, magical sort of feelings and a sort of a sense of continuity with the past of your far distant uh, ancestors. Uh, but today I found myself largely thinking how much Tweedy Outdoors would like to put his little tent up here and drink some really expensive wine. As we pan round you can see the amazing uh, vista that the Stone Circle has of Morecambe Bay. And as I bring the camera round uh, here you can see, oh, you do some pointing as usual, the sort of line there there, so the line is there of the root uh, up and the tree line that you can see there is sea wood. So my uh, proposal is that uh, whatever happened here, if it was a ceremony, they would then proceed down there to probably throw things in the sea. A pretty amazing circle, guys, I'm sure you will agree. Excavations in the Edwardian era uh, have shown that there were Bronze Age burials stacked up on top of one another, a cobble sort of floor in the centre of the circle uh, as well. But I mentioned earlier that we have a discovery, uh, and we do. I have found something here which I think may take us back to the Neolithic. We may be going back to before this circle was actually constructed. And although the common is littered with uh, tumulus, tumuli is it? Uh, and Bronze Age burials. This, I think, is quite unique. Let's go and have a look. I hope you can hear me above the din of the tykes on their motorbikes. Uh, now, when I say that we've discovered this, to be honest, I have seen something about this theory on YouTube. Uh, it, from the megalithic tours people, I can't remember his name. I'll put it uh, down there uh, so that he gets his just uh, credit. I think it's his theory that we're going to have a look at. And it's just up here. I can't believe it, one of the tykes has just uh, driven his little uh, motorcycle through the stone circle, outrageous. So stone circle is there, and if we have a look here, we have uh, what we're going to be talking about now. Um, clearly, what we're looking at includes this natural limestone uh, over here, but it has been suggested that this has been adapted in the Neolithic period to create a meeting place. And the clues include things like all this cobbling that we have down here uh, on the floor. 
there's a lot of this sort of loose uh, cobble sort of rocks. You can see uh, those uh, over, over here. So the view is that at some point a cobbled floor has been created within this natural limestone uh, area. Back in the studio, and thinking about a conversation I had off camera with Ian McNichol about the Edwardian excavation of the stone circle, uh, he told me that he didn't know whether the Edwardians had put the left the cobbles there in the stone circle underground, or whether they'd removed them, as was the slapdash way of things with archaeology back in the day. So what I've just been looking at and talking about there uh, may actually be, thinking about it, the cobbles that the Edwardians pulled out of the stone circle and then casually dumped uh, uh, up here. So if that is the case, then sadly, a lot of what I've just been talking about is clearly... And then we have things like these seemingly granite blocks mixed in. So that's granite there, that's granite, 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 granite. So almost a circle of granite sort of coming round over, over there. So someone's brought that here um, and uh, added it to the natural limestone. And the idea is that this is a throne. There's even a step up onto it. So whoever was hosting the Neolithic meeting would sit on here, presumably an important person like a chieftain or sort of a king, a bit like Charles down in Westminster today. And then everyone would gather around him or her in this space to listen to whatever rules, I guess, uh, he or she was choosing to decree. An interesting theory, I'm sure you will agree. And if this was a Neolithic meeting place, uh, you can see why then later on the stone circle uh, developed down there when they got all Bronze Agey. And you'd imagine that um, if the circle was for rituals, that this would have carried on to be perhaps a meeting place, a preparation place, the starting point of the ceremony. A bit like Buckingham Palace today, uh, which is where I believe Charles started on his progression to become our new king. Well, I think that's been a very successful edition of the Coastal Catalogue. I hope you agree and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please make sure you like and subscribe. There'll be loads more content in the weeks ahead. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. It really is great how these endings are going on the Coastal Catalogue.